Riots erupt in Sweden over plans to burn Quran at far-right rally. Recently, Strom Kurz, I, which is Swedish, I guess, for hardline, an anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim political party, organized rallies in Sweden, leading to violent riots injuring more than 40 people. Ramus Paludan, the group's leader, a Danish-Swedish politician, said they have burned a copy of the Quran and plan on doing it again. The group carried out similar acts of burning the Quran in 2020 in the city of Malmö, as well as in the Muslim-dominated area of uh, Rinkaby. The uh, Muslim-majority countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, uh, condemned the incident and called for Sweden to act quickly. The Foreign Ministry of Turkey called the incident vile attacks against the Quran. Anders Thornberg, the chief of Sweden's national police, stated the riots started on April 15th in the cities of Rinkeby, Orebro, uh, Norkopin, and Linkopin. Uh, riots continued in Norkopin and Linkopin until April 17th. A police spokesperson said 26 police officers and 14 other individuals were in injured in the riots. Dozens of individuals were arrested related to the violence and destruction of property. And yeah, okay, so I'm watching I'm watching cars on fire. Right? Yeah. Is that who who did that? Is this like these far right people burned a car? No, this is the Muslim population rioting. Oh, in protest. In response. Uh, yes. Wait. So people. So how come everybody's talking about the Quran being burned and nobody's talking about? Well, not that many people are talking about these cars being burned. Isn't like? Isn't that a higher priority to avoid? Yes. Mm. I would agree. <laughs> Wait. So okay. I, Okay, so I don't agree with these far right people, okay, because they are, I mean, I don't have any problem with burning the Quran if it's done in a safe environment and you don't mm -hmm. like cause any hazard to anybody, okay, but I'm pretty sure these, well, I mean, these far right loons, right, they, their agenda is not, is different than ours, right? Like these, well, here's are the thing, bigots, what? So this is, it's a sticky situation. Okay, so this guy, I've watched like short documentaries about him, and he intentionally goes to Muslim dominated areas or Muslim neighborhoods and yeah. will go play like catch with the Quran, just go throw it around, sometimes even like throwing around a Quran that's like covered in bacon. I don't know how they managed to do that, but they wrap the Quran in bacon and then play catch with it. It purposefully in neighborhoods in parks where they know that there will be high concentrations of muslims who will be exposed to this and see this in the public space even though they may not necessarily want to be exposed to that kind of thing and um it's it's a tricky situation because sweden also has a lot of anti-hate speech laws and a lot of laws that Strange. are against incitement um to a community and many people I think would rightly consider what a lot of what he does to fall within that area of the penal code, but he is actively um, protected by the police. Not that he should not be protected by the police, but people are arguing, well, this seems to be breaking areas of your penal code regarding hate speech and incitement of communities or gross incitement. Um, and uh you know, but they're protecting him on you know the 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 muslim youtubers i watch are like but they're protecting him under so-called free expression you know you're breaking okay. your own laws to protect him under so-called freedom of expression um so it's uh but here's what i was thinking about was i remember when this happened two years ago in 2020 we covered it and Unfortunately, this is exactly the reaction that this guy wants to get out of the Muslim population because mm. his agenda is to show that the Muslim immigrants that have come to Sweden from around the world, but I believe many of them from Syria, his agenda is to show that they are antithetical and dangerous to the Swedish or Danish way of life, their civilization itself, right? And so basically it is in his interest to incite these communities 
to riot and start burning down cities and injuring police officers. Um, th like this is what he wants because when they when when his um, he he his his group is doing this to get a reaction. Like let's be completely clear, it is to do that. But when mission it successful, is, right? And yeah, so they're playing exactly into his hands because he is trying to show basically he's he's an anti-Muslim bigot. Like I'm not just throwing around that around. He patently is. He's trying to show that. I mean, he's the stuff he says about Muslims. Like he's trying to show that they should not be in this country because look at how they behave. You know, they're yeah. uncivilized. This YouTube, this is not what I believe. Yeah, this we're not saying. Okay, guys, uh, YouTube, we're not saying any of these views. We're describing what uh, certain bigot, uh, bigoted people believe. Okay, this is not our views. Okay, so please do not strike us down. Um, I have burned the Quran. Okay. And these people have burned the Quran. I have licked the, the Quran. Yes, we have. Yeah, we have done a whole bunch of desecrations on the Quran on this channel. Okay. The difference between what, how we do it and how they do it is they purposefully go to Muslim areas where it's unavoidable for a Muslim to see it. So I, we believe in freedom of expression. We believe like there's nothing wrong with desecrating the Quran. But it, there is something wrong with forcing your content upon your your expression or content upon people who don't want to see it, right? So f when I desecrate the Quran, I'm doing it because I'm trying to break taboos and I'm also trying to break barriers for freedom of expression. I'm trying to say like you don't people don't get to draw red lines around us and tell us how we get to express ourselves. However, this is not being forced upon somebody who doesn't want to see it because like for example the video that i have of burning the quran clearly says that this is going to be a video about burning the quran so anybody who watches it uh, is clicking on it right we think the response like it's fine if you don't want to see a type of content but the responsibility of you not seeing it is on you not to click on it it's not on me not to make that content so we're we're just we're just making it clear where their responsibility lies like you can't say like you can say i don't like it so i'm not going to watch it that's totally fine but you can't say i don't like it so don't make it that is not okay right but what these far-right bigots are doing when they're burning a quran or like i don't know playing with bacon or whatever is they're going in to muslim areas or in front of a mosque and they're basically forcing muslims to see it right like it's unavoidable they cannot not see it right that's not okay you should not be doing that that's like that's basically harassment um however as bad as that is i'm pretty sure burning property like a car is a lot worse right especially if the quran that you burn like okay if you burn someone else's quran that's a crime if you burn your own quran well i mean by the way, a lot of people are complaining about like, oh my God, carbon emissions and stuff. Go watch my Quran burning video. I actually donated to offset. I donated to offset my like one ton of carbon emissions. Okay, carbon footprint. That's what I did. So the amount of carbons that I produced to our environment was way smaller. So I my Quran burning video is perfect. Like I have covered everything to show how this is not harmful to anybody. Even when it comes to carbon emissions, I donated and I showed my proof of donation to, to show that I offset the carbon emissions that I'm doing from this Quran burning. It's a perfect video. Just search for, <laughs> just search for why I burned the Quran, Armin Navodi, you'll see, you will see that video, okay? Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, <laughs> but that is nothing. Like look at how everybody's talking about in this incident. Everybody's talking about the Quran burning. I'm watching a video of a car being burned down. Like, seriously, what is more important? This car who someone's property being burned down or a bunch of a piece of paper? Anyway. Well, what's interesting is that this hardliner guy, this far right guy, didn't even end up going to do this rally. And riots still broke out across several cities nonetheless. And he said that he didn't go because he was like, the police don't don't have the ability to protect me or even themselves. Therefore, I'm not even going to go do this. 
Like, so I feel like this whole situation completely played in his hands and played in his favor in terms of the narrative that he's building. Like, look at how far law and order has devolved in Sweden. They, we, the police can't even protect themselves from this. Like, um, it's a, it's a, it's a bad situation all around. Um, and it's also complicated by the fact I'm not familiar with the Swedish penal code in any form, but, um, I think this, this contention with all these hate speech laws versus freedom of speech in the country is something that does need to be addressed and looked at seriously because there could be very like strong hypocrisy there. Um, Wait, there were some good comments in the live chat. So Forever Stormy is on Twitch. Guys, go follow us on Twitch. She is saying this is being used in Hindutva circles to tell everyone that this is what Muslims do if you show them any tolerance. So, like I said, not only is this playing in the favor into the hands of the narrative of the far right in Sweden, it's also playing into the narrative of the far right in India. Wonderful. Um no Name, who is Swedish, commented and said, criminal gangs jumped in on the riding bandwagon. We just don't know how many just yet, though. So, again, this isn't verified, but something to think about. Maybe it wasn't even all Muslim population that was involved in this rioting. Just other people jumped in and took advantage of the situation to cause destruction. I hadn't yeah. thought about that, e but it's worth considering. Either way, whoever did the car burning... That's that should be a higher priority. That should be a higher concern than the Quran burning. Oh, I mean, and there was a lot more than just car burning. There was a lot of right. chaos. Um, okay. uh, ba, 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 ba. And Forever Stormy is saying, no excuses for the rioting, though. I can totally understand if they launch a mass protest, but not rioting. Yeah, that'd be yeah, totally mass fair. Yeah. And for who, for whoever wants to say that MLK said riots, riots are the what language of the unheard? Is that what he said? Of the oppressed. He was, of the oppressed. He wasn't excusing it. OK, if you actually listen to everything he says, he actually doesn't see it as a good thing. He just says it's inevitable, but he wasn't endorsing it. So don't take MLK out of context. Oh, Bubble is here and Bubble is saying. Ironically, China lashed out at Sweden for not protecting the beliefs of Muslims. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> what are you, oh my Wait, God. Bubble, you have to be. You're pulling no. my leg, aren't you? You're making. Are you, sure? are you serious? <laughs> hey, yeah, don't, don't hurt Can't... their feelings, but put them in concentration camps <laughs> by the millions. Unbelievable. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. In By the way, I do want to ask. Irony. I do want to ask, like some <laughs> people uh, are saying, but wasn't kidding that actually happened. Unbelievable. Holy crap! No, I do want to ask. Like this should make some Muslims who are offended by Quran burning think, right? What do you care about the most, right? I mean, what is more important, genuinely? What's more important, right? like look how look this china example should be used as an example like is this the standard that you want do you want people to respect your beliefs and violate your rights or would you prefer people like us who don't respect your beliefs at all uh, but want to respect your rights what is what is which one is a better alternative i know you don't like us disrespecting your beliefs okay but you know i think like you should see value. I mean, okay, to, to be honest, if you want to be really Islamic, technically you should value your beliefs more than your life on earth, right? But I'm, I do think that more Muslims would appreciate the fact that as atheists who don't believe in an afterlife, who don't believe in Islam, we are prior, the reason behind why we are prioritizing your well being and protecting your rights rather than protecting your beliefs okay like mm. even if you don't agree with us even if you think your beliefs are more important than your rights can you at least see try to put yourselves in our shoes and see why for us your rights and your well-being and your freedom and your prosperity for us matters more than protecting your beliefs 
like try to sympathize with our position based on our philosophy, based on our worldview, even if you think it's wrong. I think that was very well put. And it's interesting because I was li I was watching different like YouTube Dawa guys talk about this and this smile to Jana guy, he was talking about like, oh, you know, if you think you're trying to destroy our faith, you know, because Judaism and Christianity is like a, a very textual, um, I can't remember the word he used, but it's a very textually based faith, whereas Islam is in, in many ways an oral tradition. So you can't, he's like, you can't destroy our faith. Like we, people memorize the Quran. You can't get rid of this. So I thought that was kind of funny. I haven't heard that perspective from a Dawa guy before regarding these desecrations, because usually they're very like gung ho and fire and brimstone about it. But this guy, he was instead like, well, good luck trying. <laughs> like, you know, we, we, we pass this knowledge down through chains of narration. Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get rid of this, but you're just trying to disrespect us, which, I mean, that's true. Yeah, no, but people are like, you can't get rid of the Quran, okay? Don't worry, the Quran will stay, okay? Don't worry about it. Like, even, it's not, it's not just because it's an oral tradition, it's on the internet, Okay. No amount of burning the Quran will ever be able to remove it. Okay, somebody put that thing on the blockchain and then nobody has to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Wait, this is a funny comment from No Name saying, as sad as these news are, Susanna butchering the Swedish language was entertaining. Well, you know, I'm glad that made it worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oxymoron. Saying, I used to believe in a similar kind of freedom of speech, like this Swedish Jude, just on both sides. I are you, are you referring to the Swedish far right guy? Um, no, now yeah, I am yeah. not he so sure. I can't take. I can't. You can't have dry, clinically philosophical, dry laws replacing collective psychology. Okay, we'll find wet ones. Um, <laughs> Shut up. Bull. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> bull. bull Bubble is saying, oh my well, God. Omar, well, Omar did burn the Quran, didn't he? Um, not the, okay, according to Muslims, he burned the false Qurans, not the real ones, okay? Mm. And also, there are some beliefs that, you know, I mean, technically, if he, even if he did burn the false Qurans, the false Qurans did have some of the proper verses in them, so he did burn papers with Allah names on it and like proper Quranic verses on it so he did do that um also I think like there are some traditions where like disposing of like old Qurans is done by burning so people like mentioned that as well but I think like you could argue well th those were not the Osman burning of the Qurans or these other Quran burnings the intention is not the dis disrespect Right, but so this burning of the Quran, because the intention is disrespect, then it's perceived differently. Maybe you could argue that I don't know. No, I don't, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm making sense of it, but I don't think other people think about it this way. Well, because it's religion, it's not supposed to like be consistent. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to make it consistent for them. Okay. But but nobody this is I've never heard anybody say that, right? So well you're welcome, Muslims. You could take that and <laughs> use that if you want. Uh hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.